as you might have heard from the uh, introduction, I'm fairly new to this sort of grey world of social science. Um, I like to say that I sort of came from the bridge in between pure science and now moved into social science, which is more, as I said, the grey area where nothing is quite right, nothing is quite wrong. There's so many different aspects to one single question. So you can get great debates and get great arguments about all and nothing, really. So um, I'm in the department of gerontology, and <laughs> this is a little bit embarrassing. I've been in gerontology for about two years, and I always get the question, so what's gerontology? And I'll kind of just go, yeah, well, it's a study of aging. And I decided about two months ago, only two months ago, to look up what gerontology means. <laughs> you would think that I looked up this about two years ago before I entered into gerontology, but no, apparently us PhD students aren't as clever as we might look. Anyway, gerontology is, I'm going to have to read this out because it's a bit of a mouthful. Gerontology is the study of social, cultural, psychological, cognitive, biological aspect of aging. So basically, it's everything that's got to do with the fact, well, sort of what happens to us as we sort of get older and as we age. So my PhD research looks into the pathways of informal care. And the reason why I chose this topic is that I grew up um, having an older aunt who spent most of my living memory looking after her disabled son. So I saw how it affected her life choices and sort of her life in general. And it wasn't just negative aspects, as you quite often hear. There was a lot of joy and there was a lot of positivity. Um, every year we got to go on a, on a special trip to Legoland. That was the highlight of my year because I, I got to go over them and it was free and so much fun. Um, so before I start really going into my, my research, it's, I don't have a watch on me, so I don't know why I'm doing this, but it's past nine o'clock, we're in a pub. I thought I would turn this into a drinking game. So every time I say care, you have to take a sip of your drink. <laughs> I also decided that this is a really bad idea because in my talk, I will say care every other sentence. So you would end up getting very, very drunk. But I'll make you a deal. If I start using very fancy, smancy, pantsy words, or a lot of jargon, please feel free to shout at me and uh, I will do the drinking then. So, why is research into informal care important? Well, just to clarify, when I'm talking about informal care and informal carers, I'm referring to people or individuals who is providing care for somebody um, without being paid. So the formal definition is um, people who look after, um, oh, people who support family or potential friends. Um, and it can be people who look after a relative, a friend who is in need because of old age, physical or learning disabilities, or illness, or due to mental health. It can also be misuse, 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 um, substance misuse problems. But the important part of this whole thing is that they are unpaid and it's not part of any volunteering scheme either. So the tasks that informal carers are carrying out can be anything from practical tasks or household chores. It can also be help um, with arranging more formal care or um, help managing finances. But it can also be in the other end of the scale where it can be personal care. So it could be help with showering, um, bathing, toileting, um, feeding, dispensing medicine and etc. Sorry, I've got to change my notes here. So the, the term, the term informal has quite often been criticised. And it's been criticised because it could be seen as misleading in a way, because it doesn't really fully incorporate the magnitude and the determination and the de dedication and the scale of commitment that the carers are providing and the tasks that they're actually carrying out. But these carers are exceptionally important to ensure that the people that I need of care get to have support and get to still have a really good quality of life. 
So informed care is also very important because there's actually about 7 million unpaid carers in the UK. That's a, about 1 in 10 of the population in the UK that are providing some kind of informal care. It's also been estimated that about three in five of us at any time in our life will end up providing care for somebody at some form of state of some form. So it's becoming an increasingly um, shared and um, shared experience for us all. So this is, um, these figures I've just given kind of incorporates all carers of all age ranges. So it also includes younger carers. And I tend to look more at the older end of the scale. So over 65, it's estimated that three in five um, are informal carers. So that's quite a lot. So you can see this sort of bigger proportion are the older carers. That's a lot of numbers. Let's uh, move on from statistical numbers to talk about money. So what's this all worth? So it's been estimated that, and that estimation is from Carers UK, that the value of informal care is saving the UK government a whopping £132 billion. Pounds. That was from 2015. That's actually the equivalent of a whole healthcare system on its own. So we're talking really big bucks here. Also, this number is potentially really es underestimated. We know there's a lot of hidden care, so it's not being calculated into this. We also kind of, how do you put a value on care? How do you put a value on providing emotional care, for instance? And now we're sort of sticking with this money, and uh, I'm going to do some, some business lingo, because that's completely not my field, and I like to just do that jargon. So supply and demand. Johannes was already saying that the um, population in the UK the aging, is, is aging and worth a lot more older people. So you would think, I've just kind of said that a lot of, of carers are older as well. So wouldn't that just mean that, hey, the supply is going up. We got loads of carers. Should we really then worry? Yes, we should, because the demand at the same time is also going up. So again, Johannes was talking about the um, um, disability free life expectancy is not actually catching up with the life expectancy, so the gap is growing. And that means that this health, this, this uh, um, supply and demand balance is not balancing out, is widening. So we need more carers.